Hi, I'm Frances Proctor, otherwise known as Angel Eyes Online. Hey, I've just got a quick tutorial here on how to create a watercolor brush. I'm going to be using Designer Pro 11 for this, but there's no reason why you can't follow along and do the same thing in Photo and Graphic Designer 11. Alright, so over here on this side in my line scour, you can see I've got a couple of pre-made brushes here. Just to kind of to give an example of what you can do and, and uh, what kinds of things you can do with, with creating watercolor effect brush. And the two that we're basically going to be looking at today are these two. This one here, it's just using this, this one down here just to create some strokes and I turned it into a repeating pattern brush. But let's have a look at what these two do. I'm going to start with this one up here. I'm going to make this one quite large, 24 points, I guess, to start with. And I'm just going to create a large stroke. You see, it makes a pretty big stroke, and it's picking up the color from my line color. So if I switch that line color, here to say a magenta color and you'll see it's going to be a magenta color and you can layer these strokes one over the other and it basically you know you can use these strokes if you make the brush big enough it could be used to make a kind of a wash effect or a very pale effect which is kind of a nice style of brush to have. And this one down here is yeah, a little heavier, a little darker. I generally use this one at a smaller point size. And I'm just going to go down here and I'm just going to click and drag. And you can see it too takes the color from the line color. And if I go over top of that one, you can see there is a bit of transparency of the effect to the brush. As you would expect with a water watercolor paint. And I'm going to take and just make a big stroke here just to show you how the brush stretches here. And you can see I've got different transparencies going on here, but it's also got a bit of a different different color variations to it as well. So let's go down here and have a look at how these brushes were made. So I'm going to start by showing you how to make a basic brush shape and then we're going to apply the different colors and transparencies and, and stuff to, to get our different style of brushes. So the basic brush shape, basically I start with the shape painter tool here. And we want to make sure it's set to paint. And we want it quite big. I see I've got it quite big. And we're just going to create a, a small, short stroke like this. Let's take off the uh, try it again. Take off the border. And I'm going to use, I like to use this dark blue color. It's a basic blue, I guess. It's a nice saturated blue. So it gives a good color transference when you're creating brushes of different colors. So now that we've got this, I'm just going to move around here. One of the first things I like to do is kind of shorten it up a bit because we're going to be creating an art brush that's going to be stretched along the stroke. So if we start with more of a scratched up version of our stroke, it's going to look a little better on the final brush. Scratch it just a wee bit more. All right, so this is our basic kind of blobby shape. You can even kind of skew it a bit just to level it out a little bit more. Then the next thing, I'm going to go back to the Shape Painter tool. I'm going to change it from Paint to Warp Fast. I find this works quite good. And I'm going to pull the size down. 
and I'm just going to click and drag and we're going to pull out the ends of it a little differently. Basically the idea is just to create that effect that you see at the ends and uh, ends of a, a brush stroke where the bristles have pulled the, just begun to pull the paint and at the other end where it's stopped pulling the paint and you can kind of sort of get a bristly look to the ends of the stroke and I'm just drop it down and by using a variety of smaller sizes you can customize your end of your brush stroke to your heart's content and I'll just quickly do the other end here pull it out and this is another reason too why I kind of scrunched my mean shape so much because you're making it longer by doing this all right not quite as detailed as the beginning but you get the idea you can make them as detailed or as as undetailed as you you want and I'm just going to scrunch this back down a little bit more because we you know, lengthened it in creating our brush stroke actually maybe we'll scrunch it from the other end all right now we're going to take a look at getting the color variations and then we'll do the transparency so we're going to start by switching it from a black fill to a fractal clouds fill there's our fractal clouds fill and i'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to squash this down and then I'm just going to pull this one out and we're going to just kind of pull it out until we get almost kind of an effect as if it was painted with bristles and now you can see if you get your cursor from the right point and it becomes a hand you can kind of move around and because we want to get it so that it's you can do that. You need to keep that hand. You're going to need to move this around and you can kind of pull it around and this looks pretty good. And you've got darker here on these edges and it's going lighter to, towards there. Now this goes from blue to white and I think that's just a bit too much of a color variation in it. So now I've got my handles way over here. I'm going to select the outer handles and then we're going to go down here and change that. Oops, undid that. Wrong handle. We want the center handle. Then we're going to change that to a pale blue. So that still gives you a color variation in the stroke, but it's also not quite such a harsh color variation. All right, but this is still a solid color. There's no transparency to it. So I'm going to take our transparency tool, and I'm going to do the same basic thing that I did with the fill. I'm going to do with the uh, transparency tool. Then we're going to go to fractal clouds. I'm going to pull it down. Maybe not quite as much as I did before. Pull it out. And again, I'm going to move it around until I've got Oops. Going a little haywire here. This looks pretty good, but I'm going to uh, you can play around with your transparency quite a bit. And you know we've got quite a bit of transparent airs that are completely transparent, and we don't really want it completely transparent. 
And I think I'm going to just So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select in there and we're going to go and this is going to give us our transparency level for that handle. So if I go like that, we get a lot more. This is the lot I want. And I'm going to just bring that transparency down so there's still color in those transparent areas. looks not too bad. Gives you an idea how I created the, the brush stroke anyways. It's with the recording going and I'm using my pen and tablet and I'm seeing a little lag in responsiveness here. Probably just my machine. Anyhow, that gives you an idea of how I created the brush strokes. That's your basic brush stroke. And we'll take that brush stroke and I will go up here to create, create the brush. Create brush. We're going to leave it as an art brush. And I'm going to call this one. What have I got? Color one, two, three. We'll call this one. Color four and create. And there's watercolor four down here. Now I am going to edit that brush. It shows us we're editing watercolor brush four. We're going to mix the line color with the definition colors and we want to make sure it stays at stretch to fit stroke length. Click save. And we're going to click all strokes. Then we're done. And we can now paint with our new watercolor brush. Now I will just drop the uh, selected and drop the point size down. And you can see what you've got. Not bad looking. Not a bad looking brush and paint with a couple of different colors just to And there you go. So that's the first one. So now the second one, I'm going to use this same brush. I'm going to use this same brush definition object. You could create another brush definition object if you like. I'm just going to use this same object, and I think what we'll do is we'll just duplicate it. We'll pull it down here, and I'm just going to move my page up. And I'm going to make this quite a bit bigger. And I want to make this brush a nice, large, soft brush. And because these brushes are going to be rendered as a bitmap, and this one is likely to be used at large sizes, I'm going to make it really big. And I'm just going to go up here, I think it's selected. We're going to go up here to the line effects, and I'm going to click new. And I'm going to go down to the soften filters and we're going to use a Gaussian blur. There we go. Here's our blur. And I'm just going to set this at about, I think we're going to start with three and see how that works. And this is going to take a minute because it is so big. And you can see that it's kind of softened our stroke, but 
I think we need it a little softer for the effect I want to go for with this one. So let's do it about six. Getting softer. Looks good to me. You can still sort of see the bristles in the brush, but it's a lot softer. Looking so I'm right. Okay, and that, the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to take the eraser tool. And I am going to make it very big. And we are going to make it very soft. So it's very highly feathered. And I'm going to take, and I'm going to hold down the Alt key. And this is going to allow me to erase in a straight line along the stroke. Now I'm going to do this one more time at the top. We're just going to go like that. Same thing. Alt. And this is just going to give our brush softer edges. And you can continue to go in if you want and just take a bit more off of in, in places. We want to leave the edges, but we want the, the ends rather, but we want these long edges to be quite soft. And I might even I might even zoom out here and take the uh, eraser tool and just taking too much. Take it down like this. Let's bring it up a bit so it's really soft. I'm going to take too much. There. Zoom in so you can see how it looks. It's really quite soft on the edges. So it will blend quite a bit better. You could Go in just a bit on the edges, just, just like this, just to kind of, you want to slap them a bit, but not too much. Maybe we'll do this one in a couple of places, but not everywhere. All right. As you can see, you can really quite fuss on these strokes quite a bit. All right. And again, I am going to just, if it's zoomed out, I'm going to make this even bigger. The bigger you make this now, the bigger you'll be able to make your strokes later without it introducing unnecessary pixelation. Now because I softened these edges, these ends as well, I am going to get it, it'll introduce in the brush a bit of stretching in here where there's transparent edges. And to remove that, I am going to use a little trick. I'm going to take the rectangle tool and I'm going to click and drag to create a rectangle. Don't worry, I know it's got the same fill as the original brush. We're going to disappear that in a few minutes, anyways. Um, I'm going to send it to the back. Control E. Uh, let's make it a different color so I can see my brush. Place on. There we go. Now I can see the brush. And I'm just going to. And now I'm getting this screen garbage because of my computer's doing some strange things with the recording software going. But anyways, now I'm just going to quickly click, select both of these. You can see down here I've got two objects selected. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, that's right. I want to select both objects. And I'm going to hit Q to clip it. It's going to take a few minutes to apply the blur effect. And for some reason, it's gone all black. 
Usually I do these about with a grey tone. Oh, I still just have my two objects on there. And they're both grey. Okay, so now we've got our basic brush definition object. It's nice and big. So I'm going to take and I am going to just select that. Then we're going to grab our actually. So now we've got our brush definition object here. Alright, so now you've got your brush definition object here. And one thing I want to mention before proceeding with this, when you're using the Gaussian Blur, it is a slow filter to, for the program to apply. It's definitely not the best, but I mean, it does give us that nice soft stroke that we're looking for. Um, you can lock that effect. If you go back into the effects menu, there's a little lock icon that appears up here and you can just lock that effect. All right, so let's make our brush, just like we did before, create brush. Art brush, and I'm going to name this one. Watercolor 5. And again, we're going to click create. Click edit brush. Then we're going to make sure that mixed line color with definition colors. Make sure it's just going to stretch along the stroke and we're going to click save. All strokes. All right. Let's paint with our new brush. Yeah, let's see where was that? Five point. Oh, let's make it nice and big. 24 point. And I'm going to just draw a nice line and Okay, so we need a little bit bigger. Let's go 72. And you can see it's still pretty heavy for a wash effect. So what I would do if I was going to use this brush for a wash effect is possibly lighten the transparency on the brush definition object before you uh, 
create the brush object for the other thing. Other way you can do it, and this is one I didn't do that beforehand, is to go into your, make sure nothing is selected. Go into your transparency tool. You can bump up your transparency quite a bit. Now we're going to go back to our freehand tool. Make sure our brush is selected. And you can go ahead and let's see. I'm going to actually change the color. Let's change it to this, this color. And you can see how it has changed. It's just automatically applying that heavy transparency to the strokes as you draw them, which is kind of, kind of neat. And you can uh, continue to draw and paint, layering your strokes. And the cool thing about this, this is, say you wanted a really big stroke, instead of choosing from the drop-down list, oops, I did there, we can go here and we can type in a really big one. So let's just, for fun, let's see what happens if we type in 125 pixels. Hit enter to set that. Now let's introduce another color. Let's introduce, say, a cyan color, a dark cyan color on the top of this and you can see how it it blends and you kind of get a nice soft watercolor wash. The thing you can do with these brushes is you can play around with other types of transparency. So with nothing selected we can go into the transparency tool and change it. You can use some of the newer transparencies, you can use some of the older ones. I'm going to go down here and try the hard light. And I'm going to try which brush? My original one, which I went really soft on the Gaussian blur on that one. So I'm going to try that one. Oh, back to our brush tool. And you can see, actually, that it's not doing anything because there's nothing behind the stroke. So let's undo that. And I'm just going to quickly go into my, where's my fills gallery? And I'm going to create a rectangle. And I'm going to fill it. I've got some parchment fills down here. One that's a kind of a creamy off white. I know what's going on here. All right, so there's my rectangle. That's the one thing you have to watch when switching this to uh, the transparency tool with nothing set. It's going to apply that transparency to everything you do. So when I added in this, it applied the transparency to that too. So now that this has got no transparency, just wait for this background saved. Still got a flat hard light. And I'm going to back this down, way down. Let's so just leave it at zero so you'll be able to see. So now let's go back to our brush tool. Back to the lines gallery. 
make sure my stroke is adjusted and selected. And now if we do the, uh, we can kind of see It gives you some really nice landing effects in it. If I'm just gonna, oops, undo that. Didn't mean to do that. I'm gonna select it too. I'm gonna select both of these. And we're gonna change the transparency from flat hard light to stained glass. Where we go? And you can see how that affects them differently. You get kind of darker colors and more of a muddier blending. Uh, if that was the look you were going for, you got overlay. You can just barely see the color, so an overlay transparency would be really good for doing a very pale wash. So there's lots of fun to be had with the new brushes and using Zara for watercolor painting. I hope this was useful and interesting and thanks for watching.